Hello, Power Fans! I'm Athonic Moon, joining for round two with Burn. Our opening hand is Legendary. We're going to be able to have a turn one Lava Runner, and with the two Kataxian Probes, very likely to find a second land, which turns on everything else in our hand. So I feel a little bit bad for our opponent. Planes in his slivers, I feel even worse, because slivers are the best. Take a look at their hand, and it's, you know, a pretty standard slivered hand. We're going to do our turn one getting with Lava Runner, and I think our opponent's best play would probably be to get the Journey down, but instead they're going to go for a racing situation, and and try and play the Sinew Sliver, which plays right into our land plus Searing Blaze. They now go for the journey onto our creature and get in for one point of damage, so we're just going to get down this curse, mainly aiming to try and get lethal on this next turn, because if we draw a land, we would be able to get lethal with Lava Spike, Needle Drop, Lava Spike, Fire Blast, plus Curse. Unfortunately, with drawing for the turn and the Needle Drop, we did not find it, but I'm also not feeling too bad, because even if our opponent plays only one Lord, we can get around that. Since they've only got one card in hand, I'm expecting at most one Lord here, which would put us down to two life. So let's see what they do. Sinew Sliver and a Plated Sliver. So indeed, we are fine. Our opponent did go for the race, but thankfully we did have that one Searing Blaze to deal with their Sinew Sliver. If we didn't have that, we might have been in a tough spot. So here, we're just going to take our beats, take our poison, and of course, back on our turn, we're just going to send some of the damage upstairs, Lava Spike into Chain Lightning, and our opponent concedes. So jumping on to go over to game number two. And looking at the sideboard, we do want to bring in both Martyr of Ashes, since that can completely board wipe our opponent. And bringing those in, we're going to take out the Lava Runners. They're not likely going to be able to get past our opponent's slivers if they get bigger than two toughness. In their place, we're also going to bring in the Keldon Marauders, since they can get past even up to three toughness. They can also be used for chump blocking and still do damage to our opponent. Uh, we need to take out one more card, so we're going to take out the Curse of the Pierced Heart. It's a little on the slower side, and I think we can be fast enough without it. Our opening hand is amazing. Two Searing Blazes on the draw means we're very likely going to be able to snap those off. We also have a Thermal Alchemist, which can be good for blocking and additional damage. So our opponent goes for a Blossoming Sands, and we will just pass. Uh, so Virant Sliver, I was thinking of playing the Thermal Alchemist turn one, but I'm going to go for a Searing Blaze, mainly because if they have some way of removing our Thermal Alchemist, I'd rather not get the Poison Counter starting immediately. So we're just going to use the Searing Blaze immediately. Our opponent then goes for a Plated Sliver into a Virant Sliver. Uh, we're going to play the Thermal Alchemist this time because we can block either one of these. If they choose to remove it, taking two damage isn't too bad. And then on the following turn, we can then go Searing Blaze plus Curse of the Pierced Heart. So let's see what our opponent does. Just a Muscle Sliver, so we're going to be able to easily block one of these. They could have a Mutagenic Growth since some Slivers list play that, but thankfully they don't have one this time. Going to ping in for one damage, play the land, and Searing Blaze the Muscle Sliver, and now play the Curse. So we're still in a pretty good spot here. We're going to be able to block one of their creatures and ping in for damage. The only downside of what's going on right now is we've drawn a lot of lands. Started off as a two land hand, and now we're up to six. Rather unfortunate. So we're going to take our poison, our little bit of damage. We did draw a spell at least, so we're going to ping them and lava spike them. This fire blast does represent five damage, so we're getting really close to winning here. And I don't want to block against them now, because flanking plus two damage would of course kill our thermal alchemist. And I'm not too worried about dying when we were at 16 life. So we're just going to take that, go down to 10, and ping in for a damage. If we draw any burn spell here, we do win. Keldon Marauders does ping them for a damage, so we will gladly accept that, and we will ping them for a damage with the Thermal Alchemist. Go for the Fire Blast, and they have a Dawn Charm. All right, so we didn't manage to get the win immediately, even though not many lists play Dawn Charm these days. They did use it to great effect. And here, at first glance, it doesn't look like it's something we want to block, since we would lose our creatures. Keldon Marauder is one of the creatures we brought in for blocking purposes, because it still does damage on both sides. And here, take a quick moment to think about what you would do with the Thermal Alchemist. Do we just take the six or do we block? Well, I'm going to block here because even if we do block, we do have lethal. Reason we're blocking is if their last card is a Vines of the Vastwood, we would die. So I would prefer not to die, even if it's uh, a very low chance of playing around something, because we're going to get the one ping in with the Thermal Alchemist, one ping from the Keld Marauders, and then we can just let them die to the Curse of the Pierced Heart. Um, I'd rather not play the Fire Blast right now, just in case they have of something like hollow or something to that effect. So we're just going to let the curse kill them and fire blast if we need to, but they do concede because the curse was good enough. Thank you for joining me for round two, and I will see you in the next one.